Konnichiwa. Haruyo. I'm Leslie. I'm Laurie. Welcome to Sumo, Sumo Kaboom. Kaboom. Where we talk about all, all things Sumo. Sumo. And here we are. Days one through three of the March Basho. That is what we're going to talk about today. But first, reminder, bingo. I haven't checked how many people are playing, but I haven't received an email that says we got all 500 cards given away so there must be a few left if you want to play with us check out our website for all the rules and the details get yourself a card that's right yeah because it's it's a fun way to watch the basho and you can win prizes it doesn't cost you anything to play right and you can so get your own shima no mi towel that's right or shirazu umi or, or churo churo no yeah you can get a takeru fuji towel because surely they've got those now I'm right sure they do i'm sure they do yeah so sign up but can i say how amazing big sumo fan is for always helping us run this this bingo tournament they i just want to thank you to robert amazing. thank you robert yeah yeah yes he helps us do this every time and i just want to say thank you we couldn't do it without him Yes, and thank you to all those who have uh, sent us a little thank you and uh, anybody who's donated to our coffee account. We really appreciate it. It helps us run things like bingo, and we really appreciate yeah, just that. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank we you, love thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we jump to a news flash? What if I said no? Well, then we'd skip right past it. <laughs> okay, let's go. There's not really much news, but I did see some scuttle. One but. epic story that is continuing on, and that is about Miyagino Oyakata and his stable and the state of that stable. So the latest appears to be the Isagahama Ichiman, where all the clans get together, have come up with four or five possible solutions or outcomes from this whole debacle. And one of them is considering closing down the stable altogether. Now, that seems to be what everyone's talking about. Like, that's a logistically, like, like it would actually happen. But I happen to think, wow, that would be a huge mistake because he's such an ambassador for the sport that Every time they have a new apprentice sign up, it, the numbers are dwindling. And Hakaho with his Hakaho Cup and all of that, that kind of move would push someone like that out of sumo. And I think everyone is like, I'm really worried about that. I mean, like, I think they're there to punish him. He is sitting there hilariously in the press box, like monitoring everything in his blue jacket. He has been demoted. He That is where he's at right now. By the way, he's wearing his blue jacket and brown pants. Everybody else is wearing black pants and he did not get the memo or he showed up for work and then he was wearing brown pants. And they were like, by the way, you're going to be wearing the blue jacket today and working the press box. Maybe he's colorblind. Oh, he might be. You know, I never thought about that. Yeah. But I would think that someone would say, by the way. Oh, to Hakaho? No. <laughs> no one would ever correct well, his fashion choices. Are you kidding? That's exactly where he's at right now. Everyone is telling him what to do. And I imagine people are enjoying it. You know, so we don't know. The JSA has received the four to five options of what can happen to the stable. It would be dissolved and then possibly brought about again later. Um, it's an awful lot of wrestlers to move out of a stable. Well, it the scuttlebutt is... Where would is, they go? Well, they're supposed to go into the Ichimon. Now, I don't know if they would have their own option. It appears to be that they might. But then again, I would imagine the other Oyakata would love to get their hands on some of those guys. So... I would imagine some of them might quit, though, if that happened too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that would not be great. No, you are correct. So that is... Uh, we'll we'll wait to see. The JSA representatives have been like, we're looking over everything. We won't give you an answer now. We need time to think about it. So I imagine this will all go down after the tournament. After they know who won. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. There is a lot of uh, rumors flying around online and it is from across the pond yes it's really hard to know what people are saying and who's saying it and what kind of power that they have so i'm i'm interested to see how this works out i am too but all i can say is we still don't know <laughs> great news flash we still don't know we still don't know and that is all i've got okay we're gonna get in fast then to day one unless you have anything else to say 
Not really. I mean, all the news is kind of related to this. I mean, we could be giving you Jirio info, but it's it's exciting down there, too. I mean, I think Hakuoho has, like, managed to have, like, no losses. I think Waka Takakage is down there. Like, I know Enho's not coming back for the foreseeable future. Poor guy's, like, you know, wrestling 16-year-olds. Yeah, but, but he's, you know what? He's not even wrestling. Yeah, neck is more important. I agree. Neck is I just kind of wish he would just kind of quit and take care of his neck that's how i feel about Takake show as well i'm like just there's some points in your life when you gotta just next chapter it and that's where we're at when your neck is that bad i don't injured. think these guys get that memo i really they don't. don't none of them do no but... they all get the piece of paper that says stay in there you can fight through those yep. terrible injuries always move forward yep always move forward gambate get back in the ring Uh, day one, I'm just going to mention a few things. Maybe you could jump in Absolutely. here and there. Absolutely. Uh, I got my first glimpse of Takeru Fuji, mm-hmm. who I'm still, I'm still working on that name. No, Still working on it. Takeru Fuji. Um, yeah. Cause I hadn't seen him fight at all. Yeah. At all. And I see, I remember in your breakdown when you were talking about how Terana Fuji told him, you got to stop lifting weights. You got to work on your low body. Mm-hmm. I see what you mean mm-hmm. because he's much bigger on the top than yep. he is on the bottom. Yep. And, and you can see it up against Diamami. You can yes. see just the girth of <laughs> Diamami uh, yeah. versus Takeru Fuji. And you're like, yeah, I mean, he can only do so many things yeah. up against the big guys. And you could also see his feet shuffling around on the clay like yeah. they weren't very grounded. Right. Now, he did very well. Yeah. I mean, he won that match right. on day one against Daiyamami or Daimami, however you want to say his name. Um, but it I, it did catch my eye after mm-hmm. you said to look for that. And I thought, oh, that guy is, I mean, he's got great exciting sumo yeah, to watch. Yeah, he's quick. He's nimble. Yes. But he's, he's going to have to build up like Takara Fuji's yeah, lower half. He's yeah. going to not have to If he skip. wants to go higher. Yeah. If like he wants day. to really get those, you know, big guys at the top and Sanyako. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I also thought it's inter- it's his tape job is really interesting. Yeah, I was like, I don't Ta- know who did that, yeah. but like maybe a 12-year-old. But... Takara F- <laughs> Takeru Fuji has this kind of spider web looking <laughs> thing of tape it was on like half his... Coming off on too. his QT, it's like lower, lower lateral back muscles, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's kind of coming off because he's probably sweating out of it. It's it's interesting. So I'm not sure if he's got back problems or what's happening there. But the great part of his story is he got his first victory in the top division yeah. against Diamami, even with a strange tape job. He spun really fast and got a much larger opponent out. Love his traps. Yeah. Huge traps. Yeah. Nice traps. Yeah. Nice traps. Way to begin, Takeru Fuji. I'm watching you. Onosato still does not have his hair in a top knot. Leslie, you were correct. It is not long enough <laughs> to go up there yet. <laughs> Looking strong on day one. So many guys looked strong on day one. Well, you know, Miyoguru showed he was kind of not down for the count. He had a really strong approach. He had a pull-down maneuver. He missed the first attempt, but... It worked really well against Kitanawaka. And I was like, you know, he seemed to be like, I'm back, everybody. Don't count me out. I am here. So I appreciated that. You know, uh, Ryuden versus Shimazuumi. What a street fighter Ryuden is. He just doesn't give up. He lacks that lower body heft and power, but he has the attitude of a boxer. And he will just stay the course until the end, bloody and all, which is what he was. He was overall a winner with a Uwatanagi over Shimazuumi. I do want to say Shodai had absolutely no problem meeting Kota Shoho. No. Proving on day one that his beltless arm throw is still so dangerous. And it was just nice to see him making a statement on day yeah, one. Yeah, but he won with Yori Kitty on day one is whatever they officially called it. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you. He It was an easy win for Shodai. And, I, and I'm always it's always nice to see that Shodai. But he only comes a couple of days of tournament. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm going to call him and tell him you said that. You know who I did love is I love the two veterans, Takayasu versus Hokta Fuji. But it was the battle of the injured. It That's was, what I thought. But it was a push and pull and slap. And 
Takayasu just waits it out, finds some vulnerability and pulls down behind the head on Hokuto Fuji. So, which Hokuto Fuji has no hair up top, by the way. Oh, he's he, got those two horns. No, but two the, hair horns. even more this time. It's He's lost the middle. Yeah. So. It's, it's awesome. But he looked to me to be okay after that terrible injury that he never had addressed. Well. Other I than mean, getting married. No. And maybe that love cures all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure love cures all. Absolutely sure. I will say. And this is, I'm talking about day three here. Like many times I just watch the highlights, Mm -hmm. but when you sit down and you really watch the full thing Mm -hmm. on day three, I finally got, it's been a long time since I've seen the entire, the entirety of Hulk to Fuji's lead up, like the warm up and the lead up, the full five minutes. Yeah. That thing is, is just a thing of beauty. Like I had forgotten just how spectacular it is. He yeah. spends that entire five minutes slapping himself silly, and I have missed it. I know. Next time I need to watch Hook to Fuji up against Ura because they, they're they both like so premier good. pre-bout ritual, ritualists. Yes. And I always love it. Yes. It's always a show within a show. Onosato, he had a great start. Uh, and now we know that Sudagisho is back in terrible health still, but Onosato looked strong and powerful. And uh, he is my new Asanoyama, my new... Ex- Onosato is? Onosato, my new exciting guy. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna talk about him more on day three. He okay. is very, very exciting to watch. Yeah. And he's starting strong. Yeah. I'm going to skip all the way down to Atami Fuji versus Kota Nowaka. Mm-hmm. I thought this was interesting because Kota Nowaka had absolutely no problem here. I'm starting to notice that Atami Fuji has this way. Sometimes when he leaps in, his upper body gets a little forward of his feet Mm -hmm. and his opponents can really take advantage of that, Mm -hmm. the too far lean. Mm -hmm. Um, And this was- I sometimes think it's him protecting himself. He has kind of a hunched over approach. Mm -hmm. Well, he's so tall. He's so tall, but up against another tall guy, that doesn't really work. That works maybe better against- Somebody who's way taller or maybe way shorter. I don't know. Well, I think he's got an amazing ability to absorb whatever is coming at him. Yeah. And sometimes when he absorbs, he leans into it a mm-hmm. little bit. And mm-hmm. that's where the lean comes in. And if your opponent is really watching, they can just slap you down. Right. And that is what Kota Nawaka did to Atami Fuji. I just think it's something as he gets higher, people take more advantage of. Yeah. All right. My favorite, one of my two favorite fights of day one was Takakesho versus Asanoyama. Not your favorite anymore? Oh, I I had feelings after this yeah, one. feelings. I love this one because Asanoyama looked hungry. He did. <laughs> he was like, I am taking this injured fool down. I have got this. Like, you could see him just pumping himself up in all the pre-bout stuff. But... And this surprised me. This really, really surprised me. Asanayama leapt in and he could not find Takakesho's Mawashi anywhere amidst all the slaps that were coming at him, amidst the round body shape. He just couldn't find the Mawashi. And Takakesho just slipped to the side at one point and slapped Asanayama down to the ground. Mm-hmm. It surprised me. I didn't... I. Honestly, did not expect that. No. Because Asanayama is so much bigger. Right. But I, I was glad to see Takakesho looking strong. Yes. Because I know he had no, like, very little workout leading up to this tournament to heal himself. So he looked strong. And I was like, all right, Takakesho. Yeah. It was kind of like he showed up and was like, I should still be here. Y'all relax. I got this. Right. And against someone who seems a little bit healthier and bigger, I I wasn't sure how this was going to go. So yeah. that one surprised me. Another one I absolutely loved was Ura versus Hoshoryu yeah. on day one. I just wrote on my paper, he, 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 because Ura got inside, grabbed Hoshoryu's underarm, circled so friggin' fast, and then pulled, I believe it was a katasukashi, down Hoshoryu went. It was fast. It was furious. I love watching Hoshoryu lose to Ura. It mm-hmm. was like, it was definitive. It was, it was delightful. Like, 
it was like i have this boom you are down you can make all the no. faces you want but at again me, i you. love to mm. watch was sure you lose <laughs> even though he's a real nice guy he's just fun to watch lose he really is I he really sorry, is sorry you fans as wonderful as he is you know it's just it was just delightful to watch inozeki lose to ura all right abby abby versus karishima on day one abby did just what he usually does both hands mm -hmm. i mean i just I'm, I'm always like trying to put myself in the place of whoever is opposite abby right. and it must look like a huge man jumps out of a small box and just goes right at my neck at full force yeah but and also in between all of that he he has hand trickery because that's you know what he won with in the end it's all of that coming at your neck and at the same time maybe you're trying to block it and every third or fourth thrust ends up him grabbing your wrists and yanking and pull, yanking down towards the ground and that is exactly what happened abi pulled both arms on karishima's neck and then when karishima went up to move those out of the way he just pulled straight down on karishima's arms and Abby honestly looks surprised that it worked so fast. I think so fast. everyone was surprised. It happened fast. down on his belly. Right. So Abby showed up on day one ready to win. Mm -hmm. And he did. Well done. Last fight of the day was another surprise. Nishikigi versus Teranofuji. All I know is that Nishikigi has too much junk in the trunk for Teru no Fuji. He really stays really grounded. And what happened was Teru got in and then he tried to do his lift up and back out business on him. And then he, he really struggled. He couldn't even lift twice. Nishikigi is like glued to the clay. He's so heavy. He and is. And with all of that... That pushed, I think, Terunofuji upwards, and, and then Nishiko, Nishikiki was able then to drive with an two, two hands, high up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah two yeah. hands inside the yeah. Morozashi grip. Yeah. All I remember is that it was surprising. Yeah. And I thought it was an upset. It was. It was a, a huge big and upset. Terunofuji did not look pleased. No, but you know, I love that Nishikiki has his number because Nishikiki is not always up there all the time but for some but he reason did it. he did it he's last done July it before. yeah he has his number and he, maybe that yeah. gets into Ted and Fuji's head you know maybe yeah I don't but, know it was a surprise it was a surprise finish yeah and there, I think one. there's just something about his body that Ted and Fuji just does not have an advantage with doesn't have the usual advantage yeah yeah, yeah, he, yeah. there's just like half of his game he can't do which is the lift up, pull someone up business. So that's the way it ended for me on day one. Day one, sometimes for me, like if I'm super busy, is just about like dipping my feet back in the mm -hmm. sumo water and being like, oh, yeah, 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 this is, I still really like this. And that's what it was. All right, day two. You know what? I had just a thought. What? Takeru Fuji should probably go practice with Nishikigi. They could help each other. Well, he's got a long way to be able to compete with Nishikigi <laughs> well, down bottom. Yeah. But he should share some of his leg day yeah. reps yeah, and I be like, so. this is what I do. Okay, so day two. Exciting from the start. It was a battle royale between Nishiki Fuji and Ryudin. Both of these guys fight with enormous hearts. They're willing to go the distance for the win. In the end, it was Ryudin who midway through the match got a better grip with more of an advantage, but most of it was stalls and stops and starts and patient and waiting and then bursts of fight from both of these guys in this epic long match. It was just so much heart. In the end, again, Ryudin won out by sheer strength and lifting Nishiki Fuji back and over the edge with a double outside position, but not before Nishiki Fuji fought off very well every single advance from Ryudin. I felt like it was one of those where it was like Nishiki Fuji has, hasn't really been winning a ton overall lately, but there was just one fight that he was like, if I'm dead after this one, I'll be okay. He fought like a devil. Mm -hmm. He still didn't win, but that's how Ryudin fights. So it was kind of similar kind of spirits up against each other in that, that bout, which I liked. Ichiyama Moto came out guns a-blazing on Shodai and beat him to the first advance after the Tachiai. Shodai retreated with Ichi's Notawa, which was powerful and effective. Shodai kind of looked unprepared. <laughs> And Ichi Yamamoto yeah. looked feisty and fit. So it was a Tsukidashi win for Ichi Yamamoto. Kudos to him. 
That was a first meeting between those two. Oh, was it? Yes. That's I surprising. Was, I thought so, too. How have they not ever met before? No idea. No idea. Takiyasu pulled a beautiful Uwatanage on Tamawashi, which I don't really need to break that down other than we were all surprised to see Tamawashi flip like a pancake at the edge. So mm-hmm. that was delightful. I do enjoy, again, the young ones going up against each other. Onosato versus Gonoyama. It was an epical, epic or epical. I like epical. Epical, powerful Tachiai. <laughs> but Onosato was all charge and rushed forward and Gonoyama was toast. And he was quickly over the Tawada. It looked like an insanely strong Onosato that won. It was just, this match was just youth at its best. Just all young bluster and excitement. It's just like fireworks to me. Um, great match. And then it was Daesho versus Oho. And I was like, did my eyes deceive me? Mm-hmm. Daesho's Tachiya is strong and he moves Oho back a little. But that kind of hunking chunk that is Oho was like a wall and soft but heavy and like muddy. Like, I don't know how to just describe it. He kind of moves like putty. Like really strong putty, but he got the job done. He inched back on Daesho, watching him well the entire time, following, you know, to inch Daesho back and out. And I just couldn't believe what my eyes saw, even though it wasn't flashy sumo. It was just steady sumo from Oho that worked well, shows the wall that Oho is with strength and how hard he is to move. And his advance is getting stronger. He beat Daesho. And I was just like, Daesho's either injured or... Oho's getting stronger and he just doesn't look like you know when you watch him like he's got a ton of skill but he's proving to get better and better and better and better up against these bigger wrestlers so he must be doing something I don't, I don't, I, I'm I'm watching Oho more but mostly I'm seeing except for this fight I feel like I watch him pull a lot and people take advantage whenever he pulls. Mm-hmm. But I will say on this fight, I did notice that he disrupted Daesho's rhythm really well. Mm-hmm. So perhaps Daesho is just off rhythm, which sometimes happens with mm-hmm. pusher thrusters, mm-hmm. or Oho's getting better at disrupting the thrusts. Yes. Okay. I'm going to skip to the last few, although I could talk about Wakamoto Haru, but he's, Please. he's just he's doing fine. He's it, juicy and he's great. Fine. Versus him and Meisei, it was a frontal crush out. Yes. Um, very smart, very clever for the win. So yeah. kudos to Wakamoto Haru. Love it. We have Atami Fuji up against Kirishima, though. And Atami Fuji and his body weight are proving to be quite difficult for someone like Kirishima. Kirishima gets... The right inside grip, but Atami Fuji does not uh, does his best to keep Kirishima off of his left side too. I am amazed, though, that there were not any big leg trip maneuvers from Kirishima. I, I just was like, if if it's not working, like go for the leg trips, but he didn't. And Atami Fuji managed to stay really close in, steady, and inched back on Kirishima and did a great job of keeping him upright and disallowed him to pull a throw at the edge. Atami Fuji tried a kotonage up top, but that move is is like what had Kirishima unbalanced. It didn't go through. It didn't work for Atami Fuji, but that move up top is kind of what kept Kirishima from regaining his focus and balance after that. The force and mass of Atami Fuji won out. It was Yorikiri win for uh, Atami Fuji, and he is jazzed after it he's so excited and i i did love that i don't love who he beat but look if you're an ozeki and you're up against a tommy fuji and if you want to be the best of the best you got to know how to consistently beat the guys that are bigger than you yeah 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 i really like having a tommy fuji at this level i like watching him go up against these ozekis i really do he surprises me i just like someone of his size up there, he's just a really he's I just, he's a really good opponent mm-hmm. for them. Yeah, yeah, he he is. kind of like Asano Yama. I feel like is a really good opponent. Yeah, they're going to get a guys. challenge. Yeah, and I'm I'm here for it. Okay, Kota Nuaka had a bad day at work. Um, I did like this bout between him I and Asano yeah, yeah, Yama. Yeah. It was simple sumo and a win for Asano Yama, who won the Tachi. He advanced on Ko- he advanced on Kotonowaka and drove him over the edge, just I think to prove to him that he was like, "You may be the new Ozeki, 
But just remember, <laughs> I've been there too. It was an Oshidashi win. <laughs> I like all these thoughts that we're giving well, Asana Well, no, why Yama. not? Let's make it soap opera. Okay, let's make it dramatic. Okay. He was hungry on day one, mm-hmm. couldn't make it work. And Day like, two, still hungry, and he's like, this time, I'm taking it. I got something to prove. Yep. Abi has Takakesho's number, though, because this is one match that was really hard for me to watch because Abi's most deadly weapon is the thing that is the most dangerous for an injured wrestler, which is the neck. The neck. An injured neck. Injured neck. Yeah. And that's all that Abby does is just these neck thrusts, shoves, slaps, neck, neck, neck. It cannot feel good to a man who has a neck injury. It just can't. But Abby consistently beats Takakesho. And here we are again, a loss for Takakesho with Abby's supati attack, which is just perfectly placed for damage on Takakesho every single time. Abby hopped back, grabbed the back of Takakesho's neck, and thrusted him down for the win amidst the barrage of supati. So well timed by Abby, and just one of those guys that Takakesho just can't use his skill set up against him. He can't reach him. Can't reach him. Can't reach him when somebody's. <laughs> reaching and hit your neck first i'm not laughing i'm not laughing but i did notice a difference in arm length yes i swear obbies are twice as long and let me remind you so far this day all three ozekis up to this point have lost but we have hope because finally hoshoryu won something for the ozeki rank <laughs> and that was staying inside and close on nishikigi and getting the win with a yori kitty so last bout of the day brings me to ted and Fuji over Ura, um, with the usual arm lock grip and toss around. And Ura afterwards, he, he got beat, clearly. He he just got kind of tossed around by an arm. But afterward, he bowed. So this is why I love Ura, is that he was like bowing so deep. Like, I am so sorry to not have given you a good match today. <laughs> like, I let you beat me and it was too easy and I did not challenge you. Like, he felt, like, it looked like he was apologizing. He was like, it was comical to me. But it was an easy and fast win for Ted and Fuji and um, Ura got tossed around like wet bacon in front of the whole front row. It was just delightful. So, kudos but, to Ted and Fuji. Well, and kudos to Ura for knowing how to fall head first off that ring and not hurt himself. Exactly. Because I did have a moment when he was in the air where I was like, oh no! I know, but he just but he's tucked like, and rolled. He's like rubber, that kid. That brings us to day three. I have a lot that I liked about day three. Mm-hmm. Uh, first off, just because I'm watching the new kid, Takeru Fuji. Takeru Fuji. I'm going <laughs> to get that. I'm going to get it. Did a wonderful meet and move that worked perfectly on Roga. I liked it. I thought it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Well done. Endo also entered the building on day three. He looks tired. But he's, but he's relieved. There. He finally won. He finally won. And then I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip because one of my fights, one of my favorites on day three was Sadanoumi versus Mitakeumi. This mm-hmm. is a great, great match. They both, after meeting up and sort of like jostling with arms, they both went flying out of the ring. At the same time, the judge pointed his fan to Sadanoumi, mm-hmm. but on the replay, it really looked to me as if Sadanoumi's hip hit the ground first. Wow. I watched the replay. It was close. And a million different angles, and I never saw that angle. So for me, the, the slow-mo was like, it was exactly the same time. Oh, really? See, this was, I was watching the long footage on day three. So you get different angles, depending on which pirated sumo video you watch (laughs) you get different (laughs) angles um but on this one on the angle that i was watching it absolutely looked like satanumi went down and there was first anyway but there was a long monoe like i don't know what those guys were talking about they were talking about the weather they were talking about what they had for breakfast (laughs) it was so long (laughs) what they were gonna have for lunch i don't know i don't know but eventually they got down to Tori Naoshi. So they were like, you know what? Forget it, guys. Let's just redo it again. Just, like, forget it. Re- re- yeah. Just redo. Because just you redo. think this, I think this. Let's just redo it. Right. Um, what's so great about these two wrestlers is Satanumi is so fast. His He's got high, high speed. And Mitakiumi has stability. If nothing else, he's hard to move. And so the second time they met, there was absolutely no doubt. This time, Mitakiumi with one long chest to chest 
push yeah. shoved fine Sada no Mia. Yes. Yeah. It was just really All power. fun. All power for yeah. that win. We, you know, a two for one is always super fun. Always, always, always. Just to give you Onosato update, Onosato on day three continued to look strong and virtually unstoppable this time against Hira do Umi, whom he completely smothered. He did not allow Hira do Umi to escape to the right or to, to the left. Onosato was aggressive the whole time. He never took a step backward. And in the sumo world, that is the secret to success. He didn't even have a great grip. No. He didn't have a great grip on the belt at all. He just, he didn't even have a lower position. He was just bigger and he just didn't allow Hira de Umi to do anything. Day three was a day, again, I'm really trying to watch Oho, but Oho pulled again. Mm -hmm. He just, he, it's like he goes forward until he's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get anywhere. So I'm going to pull. And every time you do that, unless it works... <laughs> Every time you do it, you leave an open door for someone to come in and push you out. And that's what Toby Zaru did to Oho. Mm -hmm. So it must be like a habit you develop as you start doing sumo. Well, you know? it, it works for some guys sometimes. Not like, for Oho. No, I think you have to have more skills to be able to make that work in a pinch. It's a dangerous, dangerous move. Yeah. Just as a mention, Wakamoto Haru, he knows the secret sauce for pusher thrusters, which is get so close that your opponent cannot push and thrust mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And he did that against Takanosho, who just accidentally stepped out because he had nowhere to go because he had Wokomoto Haru on his chest smothering the whole time. So well done. Abi versus Daesho on day three. Abi completely derailed Daesho's pushing game with that usual double hand to the neck. Abi is on y'all this basho he's three and oh yep daesho is off, off. he oh is three. oh and three <laughs> <laughs> very different starts to this basho for those two but it's worth mentioning hoshoryu completely outmaneuvered atami fuji on day three his uh speed his ability to turn on a dime all of it worked in his favor hoshoryu got one hand on Atami Fuji's belt, he tried to throw one way. He tried to show uh, throw another way. Atami Fuji countered and countered and countered, but Hoshoryu eventually got in so close on Atami Fuji that he had nowhere to go but back. So well done, Hoshoryu. Surprise of the day, however, on day three goes to Karishima versus Ura. It was an interesting match because Karishima, I mean, everybody knows that. Ura is dangerous. Yeah. And no one wants to let him get in close. And so Karishma was like, I am going to swat your hands away. I'm mm -hmm. going to swat your face away. I'm going to keep you far away from me until the time is right. And Karishima looked as if he was in charge and he was going to win. He kept Ura away, pushed Ura all the way to the rope. He had hands all over Ura. But then Somehow, I don't even know how it happened. He, Karishima swiped with his left hand, Ura ducked underneath it, and I guess Karishima was leaning forward at the same time because after Ura ducked, Karishima just fell forward and flat on his belly, meaning that he's starting with an 0 and 3 record. Mm -hmm. Karishima. I mean, Ura just did like what boxers do. And I just don't think you normally see that. They duck for the jab or whatever duck it is. Duck and weave. Duck and weave. Yeah. And he did. And I think that's what surprised him. It's like he went for that shove and Uro wasn't there. And he wasn't yep. to the right. He wasn't to the left. He was directly below him with this deep yep. squat. Yep. He just tucked that underneath. That is his trickery. Man. He's so good. So Karishima has yet to win yeah. after three days. And Ura right now at day three is two and one. Mm-hmm. That might share so, one. Yeah. I mean, things change. It's it's not a huge deal. It's only three days. You can still come back and win all the rest and mm -hmm. maybe even win the boss show. You never right. know. But it is it is an interesting and tough start for Karishima. Oh, the last two fights of the day were amazing. Were amazing. I am going to tell you about both of them. Takakesho versus Meisei. Mm. 
This one started with some super speedy little bitty pushes to Meisei's chest by Takakesha. It was just like boom, 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 boom. Supati so fast. And Meisei was throwing them off with, with his, his forearms, right? He was pushing his forearms up to move each one of those slaps off. And then Meisei, I think, got a hold of one of Takakesha's arms pulled Takakesho off balance and I thought oh that's it Takakesho's mm-hmm. going down but he didn't he didn't he regained his balance that let Mese start his pushing game and he pushed Takakesho kind of off to the side at the edge and it really looked like Mese had this win but Takakesho spun and threw I believe it was a beltless arm throw Sukinage. it was so pretty mm-hmm. so that Mese went down first as Takakesha was kind of balancing on one leg, it was pretty. And and it was like, oh, great. Takakesho proven why he is Ozaki yet again with that win. Well done, Takakesho. Very excited for the last matchup of the day, which I loved. Terano Fuji versus Asanoyama. And when you look at these two guys, they're both big. They're like, just looking at them, you go, this is going to be a good matchup. Yeah, they're built is. quite differently. I mean, Asanoyama is taller, but it's not as tall as Terunofuji, but he's wider in the gut. Wait, and... he is taller than Terunofuji? No, no, no. Terunofuji is oh. taller, oh, but okay. he's wider in like, but the shoulders and the up, like upper body of Terunofuji is like maybe as wide as Asanoyama's waist middle? and middle. <laughs> So, but, but they're as- both big guys, but they are built kind of, and he has way more bottom heft Asanoyama does he does Ted and Fuji but Ted and Fuji has those uh not butts but the what are the lower back uh upper bun upper bun yeah. muscles <laughs> whatever we'll those are those. yeah yeah the, yeah the love handle muscles <laughs> he has love handle muscles I love love handle muscles yeah yeah and Asanoyama is not taped up. He has no braces. He looks healthy on yes. the outside. Terano Fuji looks banged up on the outside with ginormous shoulders. So it's like you just look at them and you're like, oh, what is going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is going to happen? And this was an exciting matchup. They did a tachi eye and they locked up immediately. Each got a right hand grip on the belt. And there was this long, I wouldn't call it a wait. Because you could tell they were pushing on each other Mm -hmm. and they were trying to get better and better grips on the Mawashi. There would, you know, somebody would move a little bit and the other one would counter, but Mm -hmm. each pushing, you could tell really hard with their lower bodies. And so it was like just enough time for you to be like, oh my God, what is going to (laughs) happen? And there was a push with the chest. There were more wiggles. There were tries to move. It's just like two huge Bulls hugging and out muscling each other. At the end, Terano Fuji just out muscled, out maneuvered, out body positioned Asanoyama. It was just like, you know, big muscular Yori Kiri, big dudes muscling each other. I don't know how mm. else to explain that. Well, I actually thought it was lost by Loose Mawashi because Asanoyama's? Yeah, you cannot deny that, like, Look, if somebody is fighting you with their bra with the bra strap and like you're wearing a bra and they've got their hands on your bra and it's about to come undone, you probably are like fighting like heck, but you know in that split second in your brain that you're like, I'm this close to, to be a showing, naked to show in the goods. <laughs> and I did like watch it, like not as a perv, but like to see like what is the state of Asanoyama's belt? Because he the whole front piece came the down. The whole front piece came down and then the sides were way up, you know, and he was being lifted straight up, but any sort of side maneuvering could have been, <laughs> you know, an instant disqualification. But usually that wouldn't help the aggressor like usually well people no can... it do- it does it no it, it doesn't help them it hurts them because right. the the belt is so is high, high up right but that's what makes it so amazing that taru was like yeah he was like oh the belt's too high i gotta go down and get another grip right on a section of the belt that isn't moving which right. he did right and then was able to to right. maneuver Asanayama. But I still think it would get in your mind that whatever, mm. whether he's worried about flashing, I, I don't think that's the case. He probably wouldn't, wouldn't care. It's that he's just not used to having that kind of 
grip and that kind of looseness with his... I got it. Maybe he was like, here I am in the middle of this match, and my helpers did not tie my mawashi correctly. Yeah. And he, he was suddenly in another place. He could have had a split like, second shoot. of, like... I got to teach them how man, to redo this better. They didn't do it, but... They didn't do it right. I lost my, my rabbit's foot somewhere on this doyo. Right. Which was in my mawashi. Right. He doesn't do that. Somebody else did that, y'all. But yeah, maybe that split second of thinking about his mawashi. It, you'd be just distracted. Did him in. So it's the mawashi distraction That's that what put I think. Asana Yama down. That's I what would I just think. call it Terunofuji dominance. It could be. And I just think Terunofuji is stronger than everybody else. I really do. Yeah. I just think uh, either he's just spent a lot more years in the gym or. He knows how to angle his body to get more strength into his partner. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it works. Yeah, it works. So that is day one through three yep. of our breakdowns. So I can't wait to see what happens next week. I mean, week. we have we're so much have sumo to come. Day four to day 10, lots more sumo to come at you. It's always a surprise. We don't really have storylines coming into play quite yet, but I think by next week, we we definitely will. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Onosacha is looking great. Yeah, and oddly enough, Abi is coming out crushing it. So some of our Ozekis look a little down for the count, but there should get easier in the second week. So we'll see. All right. Until next week, I am Leslie. Laurie, see y'all later. Bye. Bye.